Hello and welcome to this session on inputting data into R. Before I give you an example of that, I would like to talk about how you manage files on your local hard drive using RStudio. If you're taking my class, you know that I've asked you to use RStudio for a number of reasons, not the least of which is that it simplifies the management of files uh, on your hard drive. Not everyone uses the same type of computer. As an example, I use Apple OS X. Other people use Microsoft Windows, and others use Linux. Each of those operating systems have their own file managers and ways to create, remove, and rename files. The good thing about RStudio is that we can focus on learning R, and it also provides a nice little file browser as part of RStudio. This is usually located in the lower right pane. And if you start up RStudio for the first time, usually this Files tab is clicked. If it's not, you simply just click it. And what you'll see, there's the little Home icon. And RStudio makes a guess about what your home folder is. And you can see that I have a bunch of files in here. Now, if you're just using RStudio for the first time or R, you may not have a lot in here. But let's talk about how you tell RStudio what your home folder is. It's really easy to do. Go to RStudio Preferences, and the first thing that you see is Default Working Directory uh, when not in a project. Uh, we'll talk about that in another video, what a, a project is. But the Default Working Directory is where RStudio will be every time you start up. So this is it's a good idea to put it on uh, a shared drive or a place where it's going to be backed up. A lot of people will create a folder on their Dropbox folder for this reason. Okay, this is entirely up to you. There are no requirements for this, but put it someplace where you can back up the files. Now, another concept is that of set working directory. Even though you have a home directory, you can certainly move around within our studio. Uh, it wouldn't be very useful if you could not do that. So if I go to my Dropbox folder here as an example, I click that, and then there's another folder called exercises.dir. Now if I want RStudio to relocate temporarily to this folder, all I have to do is go to the more and say set as working directory. And if you look over in the console pane, it issued a setwd command. The setwd and getwd these are the command line utilities that uh, many old-time R users are familiar with. When I started learning R, I just learned it straight from a terminal window. I didn't use any of the GUIs, so, uh, but that's my background. And again, for my students, I would prefer that you use RStudio because it simplifies these things. I've shown you how to set your home directory, and I've shown you how you can move around within RStudio or move around on your hard drive using RStudio. So next up, let's look at some examples of downloading files. Okay, let's talk about inputting data into R. There are a number of file formats available, such as relational databases, uh, XML files, JSON files, ZIP files, there's R binary files. So it turns out there's a lot of options and a lot of capability out there. But for this class and for many data mining and statistical analysis jobs, you're usually going to be reading in what are known as .csv files. Uh, CSV, if you haven't heard of that before, uh, simply means comma-separated values. As an example, many spreadsheet uh, programs such as Excel, that's probably the, if you use FreeOffice, it's the, the same concept. You can save your data and it will prompt you with a, a number of formats that usually if you're working in Excel you you accept the Excel workbook format but if you wanted to export this data you select comma separated values and it creates a text file wherein each of these fields is separated by a comma and this makes it very easy for you to read in with any data analysis program not just R so MATLAB, Mathematica, R, SAS, SPSS uh, any of the programming languages have CSV filters. So this is, the CSV is a generic format and a lot of times people will put these out on the internet so if you know what the URL is you can download it and you can read it in 
In some cases, you can read it directly from the internet. So it is a very popular exchange format, and it's for this reason that in this video, I'm going to focus pretty much on the read.table function within R. Now you can see that I have it up in the help tab here, and there are some variations on it. The first thing that's listed is read.table, and then there's this read.csv and read.csv2. It turns out that these are wrappers for read.table. So if we focus on read.table and we cultivate a solid understanding of that, we'll be in very good shape. Okay, I've prepared an example CSV file for you. It's out there on the internet. And my R script file here, let's go ahead and create uh, the character string to contain the URL. I press return. Now notice over here in the environment pane that uh, you can see these variables being created here. I'm going to read this in and we'll talk about the options to read.table uh, momentarily. So I create a data frame and look what happens over here. You see that a data frame has been created and it has the following characteristics. Now if I double click that, um, it actually shows us the contents over here in the file pane. You can see that the first row has column names or descriptors in it and everything else appears to be an observation. So this is a pretty well behaved data frame. Now I didn't overwrite, I didn't overwrite my uh, R script, it's still there. I just have to click the tab and I'm back there. So I'm just proving to you that this created a data frame. And so once it's a data frame we can do all the cool things that we can do with uh, data frames in R. The point is, is to focus on the arguments here. So read.table takes many arguments. You can see over here that it takes a bunch, but we don't have to specify all of these. All right, we, the, the most basic case is very simple. We give it the source of the file. In this case, I'm pointing it to uh, a URL, and I'm saying that it has a header, header equal to true. And we saw that over here, right? We saw that the file has, the first row is actually um, column names. Now not every file will have that. Sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you have to read it in, it will give you an error message and you go, oh it had a header and so you have to say header equal true. Sometimes you know in advance, sometimes you don't. So the uh, last argument here is sep. That's short for separator and it's simply saying that the fields in this file were separated by a comma. It's also conceivable that they could have been separated by tabs or single spaces. The commas are the most frequent case. So this is really it. If you want to read stuff from the internet, a .csv file, you don't really need much more beyond this. In the previous example, I read the CSV file directly from the internet. And in many cases, that's fine. There's no reason not to do that. Sometimes, though, you want to download the file first and then do some inspection and then read it into a data frame. Let me show you how to do that. There's a function in R called download.file which does pretty much what it says and it's uh, it's easy to use. I give it the source of the file in this case the URL and then I give it the name that I want the file to have uh, once it's on the hard drive. So if I run this download.file you see that it gives me some information, uh, it downloaded uh, about 20 KB worth of data, and so um, I now have the file. If I look in the uh, Files tab over here, you can see that it downloaded into my uh, current directory. So if I click this, you'll see that this is what the file looks like. Now keep in mind I just downloaded this file. Um, Okay, this is what it looks like in the raw CSV format. Okay, and I can inspect the file here. I have the ability to go in and look at it before I read it in. So I can, one, decide if it has a header or not. Two, to see if it's uh, a really big file. And we already know it has a header in here. So this example's uh, a little bit basic, but, but that's okay. I'm explaining some things. I haven't been entirely honest with you. There is a way to use the capabilities of RStudio to import data sets. 
However, since this is a programming class, you will still need to know how to manipulate data using read.table uh, from the command line. But this is pretty easy to do in our studio. Go to Tools Import Dataset and select From Web URL, and we can simply type in the URL we've been working with. If we click OK, we get uh, an interesting menu here. And we can make a decision about whether it has a heading. We can see that it does. And we can make a determination if it's truly separated by a comma. And we can say strings as factors. And we can make the decisions that we were making previously. Uh, but this is a bit more convenient, I would admit. So if we like everything that we see here, we simply click Import. And there's the data set. Um, so if you want to do things that way, you can.